Dylan, thank you so much for, for bringing that up. And I think all three of your countries could be examples of how you can really create really solid peace building and state building on the ground. And I know all three of you are, are on, on the way. But you need ownership, national ownership and leadership, that's for sure. But you also need international cooperation and support. I don't think you, you will be able to, to do it all on your own. And I'm, I'm also proud that Sweden is, is uh, contributing in a modest way, but in all three of your countries with economic support, but also political and, and engagement in the, in the development of, of your countries. And I think what we need to do is really see the, the interlinkages between uh, the political side, the development side, and, and have a holistic approach. And I had the uh, privilege of serving, um, I think I still am until uh, today, serving as the co-chair of the International Dialogue on Peace Building and State Building. We're handing over to Canada now. I'm very uh, excited about that. I think there will be great co-chairs in this uh, dialogue between, uh, let's say, the donor countries and uh, the G7+, plus, which are the fragile conflict-affected conflict states, and, and all of your countries are, are part of that dialogue. And uh, all the things that have been mentioned here uh, around uh, institution building, inclusive politics, security, uh, rule of law, economic development, and service delivery, delivery. Those are the peace building and state building goals. And you cannot just focus on one part and, and think that you will achieve a, a sustainable peace or sustaining peace, if you will. So we as donors need to understand that we need to look at all these pieces together. Security, uh, rule of law, economic development, inclusive societies, the participation of women, of youth, of, of, of all the ethnic uh, groups that are, are uh, represented in a country, for instance. Without that, we can never su really support uh, development. We cannot only focus on the economic side, nor can we only focus on, on let's say, um, the demographic uh, or the um, uh, democratic d development. We need to focus on all these issues. And we need to work much, much better together with other donors, so not working in silos. This really, uh, I think, uh, the curse of how we've been working uh, so far. And we're still working that way. And I think it's extremely good that the Secretary General is emphasizing again and again that we need to sustain peace and we need to work better uh, at, at the UN level, but also at, at a country level. That is, if, if we're not working good on the country level, we will never achieve any, any progress at all. So, um, since I became minister, we uh, uh, decided to have conflict, a conflict perspective, a conflict sensitive approach to all our uh, international development cooperation. So, doing an analysis on gender, on conflict, but also on environmental sustainability. We do that on everything we do. And uh, recently we adopted a new strategy also on sustaining peace, which I hope and I believe will be kind of the, the key where we can use strategic support more swiftly, uh, more flexibly, to go into areas where we see something, uh, an opportunity to help, and, and, and which I mentioned also in my, my speech, uh, what is going on now in Lake Chad, where we're supporting uh, leaders there uh, to have a strategy around uh, peace building there. We're also supporting uh, female mediators in Somalia uh, with this strategy. Uh, and uh, women peace builders in, in Zimbabwe. And this is a way to, to work where, let's say, the political side can come to the development side and say, hey, we need some support here. Do you have some resources? And how can we interlink with what else you're doing? And uh, this is new. And uh, I, I, I really... There's, there's a lot 